My gingerbread house this year is going to be the Money Laundering Laundromat, a 1950s laundromat in New York City run by the Mafia as a front for their criminal activities. It's going to have a fire escape, trimming along the top, brick walls, a mobster putting a dead body wrapped in a carpet in the trunk of an old car, another mobster carrying a laundry basket full of money, and rats eating garbage. As usual, I made the pieces in 3D to get my measurements. I made black, beige, gray, and brown gingerbread dough. I rolled out the dough. I cut the pieces out the old-fashioned way. I mention this because the video is about to take a strange turn. I shopped on Etsy for tools to make a brick pattern for my walls, but I couldn't justify spending $9 on a piece of plastic. So instead I bought this CNC routing machine that can cut and engrave materials like wood and aluminum, and hopefully gingerbread. I had to learn an app called Fusion 360, which is a CAD and CAM app that lets you design 3D objects and generate cutting instructions for machines to follow. I did my first test by making four washing machines. I told the app to leave small bits of gingerbread around the pieces, called tabs, to keep the piece from moving while being cut. I clamped a slab of gingerbread to the machine, which CNC people refer to as the stock. It went surprisingly well, but the machine didn't cut all the way through so I redid the operation with a deeper cut. Compared to the pieces I did by hand, the machined piece was vastly superior, and my mind started racing with endless possibilities. I cut the fire escape next. I read this article saying that fire escapes are evocative but mostly useless because modern building codes made them obsolete and they're left to deteriorate and fall apart, killing pedestrians below. But I think they look cool. I used a Dremel to cut the tabs left by the machine. I was gonna paint my laundromat sign with food coloring, but my machine made me so drunk with power that I chose to engrave it out of a thick slab of gingerbread instead. At this point it was a good idea to check that laundromats existed in the 1950s. Luckily they did, and I learned that they used to be called washeterias. I made the trimming out of small intricate bits of gingerbread that I cut, and I learned that this piece was actually called a frieze, originating from Greek and Roman architecture and found on structures like the Parthenon. The car was inspired by classic mobster cars like Fords, Cadillacs, and Mercedes. In my original design, I had the mobster load the dead body in the trunk, but I realized that these cars were mostly convertibles, which meant that the trunk didn't open in a way that would be convenient for loading a dead body into, so for historical accuracy, I opted to have the mobster use the rear side door instead. And then I cut the car pieces out. I made a mold of the base of the car out of metal so I could curve the wheel wells. I had to cut this piece by hand because the CNC machine can't do curved pieces. I ordered an extension kit for my machine to double the y-axis so that I could cut larger pieces like my walls. I tested several brick patterns to see which I liked best and I landed on this one. Unfortunately, even with the extension kit, my walls were still 8 centimeters too tall. I found a technique online that uses four pinholes in the gingerbread and two pinholes in the baseboard, with pins securing both together horizontally so that I could cut the bottom part of a piece, slide the piece down, and continue cutting the top while using the pins to make sure it's in the same horizontal position. I start cutting the front of the building. Because gingerbread has an uneven surface, especially near the edges, I divided the brick pattern into six sections so that I could easily redo a section if the cut wasn't deep enough. I used a bald nose bit for the brick pattern to get softer edges and rounder grooves. This brick operation took almost two hours which was way too long. I knew I needed a more efficient brick cutting path. After fiddling around with math concepts like the Hamiltonian cycle or the traveling salesman problem to no avail, which I won't get into, I ended up drawing a zigzag pattern. Fortunately, this new path saved me almost six hours on the remaining walls, so it was totally worth it. For the windows, I melted isomalt crystals and distilled water to 320 Fahrenheit. 
I poured the isomalt in the windows and I used a blowtorch to remove any large bubbles. I dipped the backs of the fragile fire escape pieces in isomalt to make them stronger and give them an icy texture. To stick everything together I used isomalt and gum glue. I made gum glue by mixing some CMC or Tylos powder with water. I added the washing machines. I slid the fire escape floor in a slot in the wall and secured it from the inside, but they kept falling, so I remade the floors longer with a cantilever design, which is where the inside of the balcony is longer than the outside. I added the sidewalk. I made the car axles and frame out of wire. I installed the driver and passenger seat. I stuck the steering wheel to the windshield. I added the spare tire. The car is fully functional with a four-cylinder engine. I used a technique called ginger clay to round out the edges by mixing blended gingerbread with gum arabic. I painted the car with confectioner's glaze to give it a sheen. I made fondant by melting mini marshmallows and mixing it with icing sugar. I colored the fondant with food coloring gels. I made a garbage can and garbage bags. I used sprinkles to make garbage. For the lampposts, I used straws and cardboard to hold the fondant up. I learned some anatomy this year and my wire armatures have shoulders and hips now. I did a test to make sure he was strong enough to carry a dead body. I gave him black pants, a tie that's blowing in the wind, and a camel hair top coat. The money launderer has a black wool coat. He's holding a laundry basket full of cash, which was commonly wicker at the time. I made two rats. I put everything in its place. I made an angry New Yorker in his pajamas who was awoken by all the commotion. I added four separate lights. And finally, I blew some icing sugar for the snow. My gingerbread house this year is the Money Laundering Washateria. It has a cantilevered fire escape that's evocative but useless. An ancient Greece-inspired frieze like you'd find on the Parthenon. An efficiently laid brick pattern that's not quite Hamiltonian, but I won't get into it. A mobster conveniently loading a carpet-wrapped body in the side door of his convertible. Another mobster carrying a wicker basket full of money. An angry New Yorker telling people to keep it down because he's sleeping over here. and New York rats eating garbage. Thank you for watching.